give you that assurance that I know from, from the Labour Group's point of view, we will want to, to look at all of this information in terms of what people have said uh, in response to the consultation, which will absolutely be a major element in us making recommendations on, on budget options, which we will do at the Cabinet on the 9th of December. Um, but I think we need to take on board and digest what people have been telling us in this report, which we, which we will do. Um, so, I think it's, it, for the purposes of this, this uh, uh, tonight's Cabinet, uh, Phil, I, I want to kind of recognise the comments you've made and, and thank you for them. And in the spirit of cooperation, we absolutely need to work together. Um, but also to recognise that the, the people of Wirral um, have spoken fairly loudly and fluidly in this consultation. We need to, to listen to them. We will do that. Um, but I think for the purpose of tonight, we, we, we just need to note this report and the, the detailed consultation findings um, contained within the appendices. And this will form the basis of our recommendations to Cabinet on the 9th of December when we move the budget options. And again, Phil, you've indicated that you'd like to uh, address that meeting when you kind of, uh, you're clear what we're actually recommending. recommending. I'm very happy to agree to that, that request. So that's really all I wanted to say in terms of this report. Um, but we absolutely will keep on talking to our trade union colleagues now and the, uh, the, the, the cabinet on the night, so that as far as we can, we can work together on this and make extension. Okay, so with, with those comments, I'm just going to move the recommendations in the report. Can you agree? And, and thank Phil and all his colleagues for coming tonight. Okay, thank you very much. So I'll maybe pause at this point if people want to. Um, Okay, 
so that's uh, item five. Eight on, on to item six, which is the capital monitoring report, again from item six. Um, the one other thing there I wanted to just say is, is positive. If you look at four, paragraph four point two, page forty one, we've uh, done some reprofiling the capital program, um, and that has enabled a one-off saving for fourteen fifteen of eight hundred thousand, which is uh, contributed to the reduction in the um, the overspend. So that's um, good to see. It. Uh, well done to, to everybody involved in, in that. Other than that, I turn, as kind of turn to the recommendations section in the page 44, um, and can we agree um, to to those recommendations at 181 and 82? Are they agree. We agree. Okay, thank you. Okay, on to item seven, the Treasury Management Monitoring 2014-15 mid-year report. Um, I, again, I think this is a very useful kind of uh, technical report which looks at the, uh, the, the, the broad economic context um, that we're working in and also some of the investment um, uh, decisions that we've made during the, um, the last six months. Uh, I simply want to commend this report to Canada, thank the officers who, um, uh, in the finance team, who worked on this, and we're being asked to accept the Treasury Management Forms monitoring reports uh, uh, in meeting our obligations under the Treasury Management Code. So, can we agree that recommendation? Agreed. Thank you very much. Okay, um, on to item eight, which is the non domestic rates discretionary rates relief. Now, yes, yeah, some people have to leave, so I'll let them leave. Okay, so this is um, this is a report back really on a, a saving that we agreed, actually all parties agreed in the, um, in the budget around discretionary rates relief. Um, my suggestion on this, because clearly um, has a, 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 an important impact on a number of organisations throughout the borough, um, both charitable organisations, sports organisations. I'm going to suggest that given the, you know, the, the importance of this money to many of these organisations, we actually continue with discretionary rate relief um, for, for this year and for next year. Um, so that gives some certainty to those organisations that that money will continue to be paid um, to them, which hopefully will help their, their budget planning. Uh, but then we have a, a, a further report back um, early in the, um, in the, in the new year. Um, <laughs> 2015 um, to look at where we are with the budget and what options we might have from 2016-17 onwards. But I think, um, given the uh, difficult financial situation of a lot of these organisations, some of whom are very small and, and, and literally have to exist on a, on a very tight budget, I think we need to give them some certainty by saying certainly for the next 18 months this discretion we will continue to be paid, and then we remove the situation again early in the year. That's the essence of what I'm recommending. Is that agreed? Yes, yeah, agreed. Thank you very much. Okay, so item nine, uh, sundry debtor ass write-offs. Sorry, can we ask our colleagues? Sorry, Kelly. Oh, I'll, I'll to Yeah. <laughs> 
over the subject of a further proposed to cabinet. Members are asked to approve the recommendations set out in this report. Yeah, thanks, George. Can I just add to that? I'm really pleased to see this report before us tonight. Uh, mind cabinet, this was one of the uh, Labour Group's budget um, proposals for 14-15. We put £365,000 uh, into the budget. You know, that's all the <coughs> against the background of cuts that we've been talking about. But, you know, I think it's to address a really, you know, major problem in our borough about the standards in, in the private private rented sector, uh, which many of the um, many of us I know have, have those areas in the wards that we represent. Uh, and I think some of us went to see the um, selective licensing scheme in Blackburn um, not so long ago, and that has transformed those those neighbourhoods that have this scheme in place. It really has lifted um, the standards and reduced antisocial behaviour and just made the quality of life um, you know, massively improved for the residents who live in those, those areas. So, you know, it's proven that it does work, and I'm really pleased that we are um, now making a, a start in the world in, 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 the, um, in, in the worst area. But I would stress, I'd like to see this just as the start of a rolling program of selective licensing areas of Cotswold. And we obviously need to, you know, uh, work hard in putting our budget proposals together to make sure that hopefully we can identify some additional funding to have more areas in, in, in future that have, will benefit from this approach. So I, I really do welcome uh, welcome this, and, and it's great to see that one of our key labour policies uh, is coming to to us tonight for us to agree. So um, I've just endorsed uh, George's comments. And um, George has moved recommendations in, in section 13 of the report. Can, can I agree those recommendations? Agree. Okay, thank you. Okay, on to adult social care and public health. Now, item 13 is withdrawn. We need to do some further work on this, so I'm withdrawing item 13. Uh, so, on to item 14, which is an asset based approach to support using social care resources effectively to transform lives. Um, so can I ask Chris to introduce this please? Thank you, Dave. Um, well, this is about what we uh, what 